Hey everybody and welcome to the first episode of Fun with Flags. Now today we're going to be taking a look at the Portuguese flag which looks a little something like this. Now it didn't always look like that, it started something like this, moved on to something along the lines of this and then ended up like this before the Republican Revolution. Now. All of these flags were associated with the monarchy. In fact, almost every king and queen had their own version of the flag, so I won't be going into detail with each of them because there are a lot, but most of the elements stay the same. Now, like I was saying, when the Republicans came through and said goodbye to the king, they kicked him away and replaced him with a president. Now, they thought, new regime, we should probably have a new flag as well. And so they did. But, like I said, they kept a lot of the same elements. Now, this is the flag that has been in use for the last over 100 years. And we're going to be taking a look at three elements. One, the colors. Two, the armillary sphere. And three, the national shield. Now, about the colors. The green represents the hope of the nation. And the red is said to represent the blood of those who died defending it. But it can also be related with the colors of the Republican Party at the time. When we look at the flag, we get the clear idea they wanted to get rid of anything royal. The blue, the white, and most importantly, the crown. Now, the armillary sphere. The armillary sphere was introduced in 1816 by King John VI. Now, the sphere was meant to represent the dominion of Brazil. And we can relate this to the fact that during this time, Napoleon was at war with basically all of Europe. And he also invaded Portugal, which forced the Portuguese royal family to flee from their home capital of Lisbon to their colony of Brazil, where they created a new capital for the new United Kingdom of Portugal, Brazil, and the Algarves. Now, the sphere itself was introduced by the Templars. In fact, Henry the Navigator was the Grand Master of the Order of Christ. And being a nautical instrument that was actually used by sailors, it quickly became highly associated with Portuguese colonialism. In fact, the first flag of independent Brazil contains these two elements. Now, moving on to the third and final element, the shield. The shield is another element kept from the earlier flags. In its center, it contains five shields with five dots each. The disposition of the shields in a cross is associated with Christ, and the five dots are claimed to represent the five nails that held Jesus to the cross. Now, the mythical justification for the placing of these elements on a flag is related to the miracle of Oric where Afonso, the Portuguese king, is said to have had a vision of Christ, even though he probably wasn't in baby form like we depict him here. But Jesus is said to have told him that God was looking over him and his companions, giving him strength to lead his men into battle and defeat the five Moorish leaders, which also justifies the fact that there are five shields. Also, although this seems to be a little bit of a stretch, if you add up all of the dots on the shields, counting the one in the middle twice, you get 30, the number of pieces that Judas was paid to betray Jesus. Now, let's take a look at the castles. Just the mere presence of them represents the Portuguese fight against the Moors. The fact that there are seven represents the number of fortresses that were supposedly conquered during the conquest of the southern part of the territory. Now, some people just say that this represents the flag of Castile from where the king's mother was from. Now, there are a lot of doubts, but one thing we can be sure of is that these are the elements of the Portuguese flag, the colors, the sphere, and last but certainly not least, the shield. And that's it. That's the Portuguese flag. So, thank you so much for watching. This was just the first episode of what I hope to be a lot more. It was sort of a test run to test the format of the type of videos that I want to make. So make sure to subscribe if you want to catch future videos and make sure to leave a comment on what I can work on if you want to see stuff that's more in depth um, and just which flag you want me to do next and stuff like that. So thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.